if you are at least not completely under that rock of life and you are paying halfway attention to the news these days, you would realize that we are in information overload of bad news. It's just bad news every which way you can shake a stick at. And it's crazy the amount of threats it feels like we have. Now, it could be for multiple reasons. One of them, we're just way more aware of every little thing that goes on in the world. How much bliss is there, by the way, in not always having to be in the know of every thing and threat that goes upon our lives. But here's a verse I want to talk that I want us to dwell on because it's powerful when we implement the, the verse. All right, it's 1 Timothy 2, 1. I'm going to kind of paraphrase it just a little bit. I, this is Paul speaking to his friend Timothy. I urge you that intrigues and prayers be made on behalf of all, all, all in authority. Again, I'm a version here. So that you may lead a tranquil and peaceful life in all godliness. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. Hey guys, welcome to your spiritual caffeine where I try to, every now and then, give you some little spiritual nugget to get you going throughout the day. If this is your first time, welcome to the Undignified Collective. Hope you will consider like, sharing, hitting that notification button, subscribing, leaving a comment, all that good stuff. Join our group of Undignified Collective people as we go throughout this life because because truly there's power in us together. Hey, back in the late 19, excuse me, 1700s, 1790s, I believe it was, there, and we're a young country at that point. I mean, we're fresh off the boat, so to speak. We're young as a country in America. We're just licking our wounds, barely squeaked by uh, with um, our war with England. And um, John Adams is president at the time. And what started out as a good relationship with then a very formidable foe, the French, the, um, France, because um, they helped us in the Revolutionary War. Tensions at this point in history were extreme. Um, very, very high tensions were going on. And John Adams, of course, he was, being, he was in the know, realizes that uh, the war with France could be imminent we need to figure this problem out. And so um, he realizes it's beyond his pay grade, so to speak, even as president. So he calls a national day of prayer and fasting. And tr almost like, like today, the media starts mocking and ridiculing him. How stupid of an idea. That's crazy. Uh, what's that going to help? All that kind of fun stuff, right? The typical media stuff. Um, so, but he sticks to his guns and he calls for the day of fasting and prayer. So the day arrives and one media outlet at least said that the churches were filled and they prayed and they entreated and they pleaded to God. And as your history books reflect, there was no war on France. The Lord changed something. It, it worked itself out. I mean, there's things, there's actually, obviously things that happened in the natural that prevented it. I'm not saying that at all. Uh, not, I'm not saying that didn't occur. But prayer played a part. Prayer played a part. Now, I don't understand fully how God being completely all sovereign, knowing anything, um, when how, how we can pray and it changes things. I, I My opinion is... God knows who is going to pray, when they're going to pray, and therefore his will was already bent because he already knows that those that doesn't release us from the obligation to pray and to pray for change so that we can live a tranquil and quiet life. You know what? There's something to be said about peace. The older I get, the more I want just some peace and quiet. So much noise all the time. Just give me some quiet. I mean, it's a sign of age, I don't know, but it's just, you just want quietness. And the verse says, in all, A-L-L, all, Greek word means all, godliness. You don't want just peace um, at the hands, but we sacrifice truth. You don't want just peace and we sacrifice godliness and righteousness. No, we want godliness and righteousness and peace. It goes together because you really can't truly have peace if all you do is compromise on the truth. That's a whole other message right there. Um, there is a powerful verse in the Old Testament and it goes something like this. If 
my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their lands. If, if, that's a clause, it means there's a possibility of yes and a possibility of no at least. If my people who are called by me, and that means Christians, saints, those who ascribe to following the teachings of Jesus and who have accepted Christ in their hearts, if those people, church, talking to you, if those people which are called by my name shall humble themselves. That's right, we need to get the first thing out of the way. It's pride, our arrogance, our thinking that we got it all figured out. We just know everything we want. You know, no, stop. You don't know nothing. Seriously, we don't know nothing. Who are we in our little teeny craniums to think we know the will of a sovereign God? No, we think we know, and we pray we know, and we need to be kept, keep ourselves humble to know what His will is. If my people which call by man shall humble themselves and pray, that means talking, communicating to God. That goes back to uh, my previous post about listening to God. If they shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, seek my face and turn from the ways. That means when you're seeking God and you hear Him and He starts touching your heart and says, Hey, I want you to, to fix this little problem right here. Fix this little problem. You, you, you slid too much right here. You know, your speech is a little bit too coarse or too sarcastic or too, you're borderline on fibbing. You know what I'm saying? Um, we need to deal with them. We can't just what we call wash it off. No, we need to apply God's uh, righteousness and for, ask God's forgiveness. If, so humble themselves, pray, and seek my faith, and turn from the wicked ways. Then, there's the promise right there. Then, I will forgive their sins, heal their land. Then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. We need to pray. Pray, talk to God about the people that God puts over us. And he allows them to be put over us. Whether it's for a blessing or for a punishment, God's ordained authority for that reason. And we need to submit ourselves as much as we can to the authority of the land. You hear me? It's truthfully. We need to, but so that we can live a quiet, peaceful life. Obviously, God comes for us before man's law. But as much as possible, the Bible says, we need to live in the law of the land. We're supposed to pray for them. Not that they we pray that they will get their justice. No, instead, we need to pray with compassion and say, God, change their hearts so they can hear from you. Change their hearts and so that they come to the cross. You know, our politicians need to know how to control their tongue and not lie every other sentence. Our politicians need to, when they say something, try and say it in the best, kindest way they can, but yet at the same time, speak the truth. Our politicians need to stand up for righteousness and integrity. Our politicians don't need to be tweeting about the gossip of the day. We need to pray for our things. Why? They need it. They need God to give them wisdom of how to run. Because, man, it's complicated out there. I Man, that's complicated. And some of the decisions they need to make are so well within the gray area of life. So let's pray. Right now. For our politicians. And I'm going to, anyway, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for your word. Lord, I pray for all those in leadership above us. Help us to live godly lives and to submit as best we can to those in authority over us. Give them wisdom and direction. Help them to have a humble heart, Lord. Help them to have a humble heart. And Lord, we then in turn inspect on us, Lord. If us, Lord, we humble ourselves and we pray and we seek you, Lord, on behalf of our leadership. And we say, Lord, if there be any sin in us, cleanse us. We don't want any, we don't want any barrier between us and you. Cleanse us. Why show us clean, Lord? Take the speck out of the log out of our own eye so we can see the speck in somebody else's. But get that out of our eye. Help get the hypocrisy out of the church, out of our hearts. And I pray for our leaders that you would rise up, rise up strong men and women of character, fortitude, integrity, boldness in Christ. So that we may, be, may, we may live in a peaceful nation, in a godly, peaceful nation. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And amen. Hey guys, if you hung on this long... Please make sure you share the video. I'm going to try and push the share of the video a bit. Um, click that share button. 
share it out. Other people, other Christians need to be reminded today that we can effectively change, not just by getting involved in politics and the, and our local district and, and, and that community, but we can change on our knees. If we can't get out, we can change things on our knees. All right. God bless. Have a good day. Bye-bye.